Hi, Kayla. This is your Nona, Mima, whatever you want to call me. You're not born yet, but I'm going to read you a story anyway. This is a story I read to your mommy, and I read to your Uncle Adam. You want to say hi? Hello. Okay, so if you can sit quietly, sit next to me. This is a story of it's Pip's Adventures by Biz Wallace. Pip the Jack Russell. Okay? So we're going to begin. I tried recording it before. It's okay. This is the story of Fat Little Pip. Pip the Jack Russell, who was round as a bun in a baker's basket. His day began as it always did, with a good breakfast. First his own, then everyone else's. In the disused old dairy, amongst the cobwebs and clutter, he helped finish the milk left out for the cat. In the stables where the horses munched softly on fodder, he helped himself to the feed from their pails. In the yard where the ducks were fed, he snaffled the corn from beneath their beak. They couldn't do much about it but waddle and quack. Pip did not care, for he now felt full. Okay. He trotted off to the kitchen garden where he stopped in the sun and snapped at flies, till the glint of a flint eye and the gleam of a scaly skin sliding beneath the scarlet berries drew his attention. It was a slow worm. He yapped at it, pawed at it, growled and snarled and snapped at it, but the slow worm slipped quietly by him and away into the raspberry cane. Father, thought Pip, for he loved a chase. So he tore around the cane to the other side, ever hopeful, ever ready for a further confrontation. And there is the slow worm. I think that's that. There he is. Did you see that? There's the slow worm. It looks like a snake. Mm hmm. Meanwhile, a rabbit sat close by, spruising up his long ears. He heard the racket that Pip made, but felt himself well concealed amongst the green rhubarb leaves. When the slow worm failed to reappear, Pip returned to his business with the flies. He backed away from the raspberry cane, snapping this way and that, and taking no notice at all of where he was going. He backed through the parsley, he backed through the rhubarb, until he backed right into the rabbit. It is impossible to say who was more surprised, but a chase began. Uh-oh. wonder what's going to happen next. They ran and they ran till they reached a spot where the soil rose up in a sandy bank, riddled with holes, into one of which the rabbit disappeared. Pip tried to follow, but he came to a sudden halt where the walls of the tunnel closed in tightly. Then it occurred to him that there could be places where a fleet-footed, fleet-sided little rabbit might go that a chubby little, tubby little Jack Russell called Pip might not. But it was too late, for he was already stuck and stuck fast, trapped by his own good breakfast. Uh-oh. Oh, no! I want to show you the beetle. We're going to talk about the beetle in a minute. There's the beetle. He's silly beetle. And I'm going to show you this picture. You can remember the beetle. So he scrabbled with his front feet and scrabbled with his back feet, so he wriggled and wiggled as much as he could. He just could not budge at all. Excuse me, said a tiny voice from behind. Might the beetle be allowed to pass? I'm stuck, said Pip. Give us a shove. So the beetle shoved for all he was worth, but Pip did not budge at all. If a person can't be shifted, he should go on a diet, said the beetle in a mean little voice before making off in the opposite direction. Later on, a cat appeared. She sat down quietly at the entrance to the tunnel where the bank was warm and sunny. Give us a shove, said Pip. I'm stuck. No, said the cat, remembering the milk. You'll have to stay there till you lose some weight. She rose and stretched and walked away. Just you white pussy cat, muttered Pip. The warren was a maze of tunnels through which the rabbits came and went. They peered round the corners at the cross little dogs. 
Give us a shove, yapped Pip, but they only laughed and thumped their feet at him. Days passed. Nights passed. Poor Pip, he was desperate and his stomach ached with hunger, but a Jack Russell never gives up. Can't wait to find out what happens next. Uh -huh. So, oh, I gotta show you this picture. Look at this picture. There is a spider on Pip's nose. Doesn't he look surprised? Look at him. Okay. So when a spider came scuttling down the tunnel towards him, he said, Give us a shove, I'm stuck. But the spider wouldn't help. And worse still, it used Pip as an anchor for its web. Ooh, said Pip, for it smelled very spidery, and his hairy legs tickled as they crawled across his face. Then his nose began to twitch, and his nose began to tremble, and he sneezed, ah, ah, achoo! And he shot out of that tunnel like a champagne cork when the bottle has been shaken. Wow. It took him a moment to realize what had happened. He was free, free to stretch, free to scratch, free to roll in the sunshine with the birds singing all around him. He felt very jaunty as he walked back home. He went straight to the stable, but the buckets were empty, and not one grain of corn had been left by the ducks. The cats dived for cover when they saw Pip coming, for he looked very cross, and he looked very lean. He barged into the dairy, Full of expectation, but the milk bowl was empty and the cats were gone. The cats were gone. See that? Then he went round to the kitchen to say hello to his people. They were overjoyed to see him. What a dinner he was given. When he finished eating, he went over to his basket and he rucked up the blankets just the way he liked them. Then he settled down to ponder. Hmm, everyone's been far too well fed while I was gone. Just wait till tomorrow. They'll be going on a diet, he whispered to himself. And I shall have such a breakfast, an extra special breakfast, to make up for all those breakfasts that I missed. <coughs> the end. And the cats, they are not looking forward. To him having their breakfast again. And there is Pip thinking about his breakfast. Now do you want to tell us? We love you very, very much, Kayla. And we can't wait for you to come. And Adam is going to read you a story next. We're going to pause and Adam's going to read you one of our favorite stories. We no love you. Yet. Here is our dog. My dog. This is okay, that's, that's little Sparky, also known as Bean. We love you.